morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. My name is Debbie LaRue. I'm a planner in CDA's affordable housing program. And this morning, we're here to continue a conversation of the affordable housing impact fee schedules, first held uh, before your board on August 23rd of this year. On that date, staff presented two resolutions to set affordable housing impact fee schedules for three types of development, including residential care facilities, skilled nursing facilities, and rental housing. In response to a request from a member of the public that the county grant folks more time to review the proposed resolutions and also the supporting nexus analyses, your board continued the hearing until today. In the interim, we received one letter from the public and it was authored by the same gentleman who spoke on the 23rd. We have considered and completely responded to each of his concerns on a point-by-point -point basis, both in our staff report and also in a detailed memo written by our economic consultant and also the author of the Nexus Analyses, Marion Wolf. That memo is available as the fourth attachment to our staff report today. His concerns were, his concerns were largely methodological in nature and have been addressed. It should also be noted that the proposed fees represent a greater discount than what was argued for in his letter. So as a reminder to your board, and also for a recap for those who weren't here on the 23rd, uh, these proposals are not new impact fees. Um, as our code already requires that new development, whether it be residential or non-residential, mitigate a portion of the additional burden that they place on the affordable housing market. Uh, under current provisions, the county provides prospective developer, or requires prospective developers to pay for a project-specific nexus study to determine a project's impact on the affordable housing market. As currently written, residential developments are required to set aside 20% of their development for affordable housing, and non-residential developments, which in this case also includes residential care facilities, are required to mitigate 25% of their impact. According to state law, impact fees and their fee schedules must be justified by a nexus analysis that establishes a reasonable relationship or connection between development projects and the public improvements for which a fee is charged. The two nexus analyses that support today's uh, proposed resolutions are included in your board packets as part of the August 23rd staff report. So to begin with the linkage fees for residential care and skilled nursing facilities, uh, this resolution proposes a fee schedule that's going to add two types of development to the existing uh, set of jobs housing linkage fees. Uh, residential care facilities are essentially those that provide uh, room, board, housekeeping, supervision, or personal care assistance uh, for basic activities such as dressing or walking. Common names for residential care facilities might include retirement care facilities, assisted living facilities, or residential care facilities for the elderly. Skilled nursing facilities are medical facilities providing care for persons with physical or mental disabilities. Uh, common names include convalescent, rest, and nursing homes. So fees for these facilities are based on this premise that a portion of new employees who will work in these new commercial spaces will require affordable housing in the unincorporated county. The 2016 Nexus analysis found the maximum justified or the total impact fee of residential care and skilled nursing facilities to be $184 per square foot and $217 per square foot, respectively. Um, but in agreement with the recommendations of our economic consultant, uh, staff has proposed fees that represent roughly 10% of that total impact. Under our current code, it should be remembered that if a developer were to propose a similar project, their fee would be assessed at 25% of the total impact, which in this case would be $46 per square foot for a residential care facility or $54 per square foot for a skilled nursing facility. So transitioning to the proposed rental housing impact fee, this would apply to all multifamily rental dwellings and uh, of course exemptions are provided for second units, agricultural worker housing, and also homes deed restricted as affordable to low and moderate income households. The premise of the the premise of this fee is that a portion of new employees who will move to the unincorporated county to work in jobs and provide to work in jobs that provide goods and services to renters and new market rate apartments will require affordable housing. Adjusted for inflation, the 2015 Nexus analysis found the maximum justified or total impact fee, fee to be $15.75 per square foot. 
Since the study uh, already discounted this fee to address, the, um, to address that only 15% of workers uh, are estimated to work in the unincorporated part of the county, these fees have been reduced below the 20% requirement. Staff is recommending an additional discount, however, uh, designed to mimic the graduated fee schedule already approved for the affordable housing impact fee for single family homes. And this proposal would discount the found maximum justified fee by an additional 68% for small apartments or homes and 37% for moderate sized homes. So to conclude, we recommend that your board adopt as presented the proposed resolutions establishing both the jobs housing linkage fee for residential care and skilled nursing facilities and also that for the rental housing impact fee. We thank you for your time and welcome any questions. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, begin with uh, Supervisor Conley. Thank you and, and thank you, Debbie, for that presentation. Um, one thing I'm trying to understand better is you suggested that currently these fees exist. Mm -hmm. So what I'm wondering is, yet this is going to be kind of a new approach specifically to residential care and then rental housing. So in the absence of going forward with this proposal, what currently would happen? How would that look? Hold that thought. The other piece more broadly is I think what we're trying to do here is strike a balance. On one hand, it recognizes that there are some impacts um, anytime there are new developments, um, specifically with regard to uh, jobs are created, uh, folks, a, a certain percentage of which um, live in Marin and, and how to make that happen. On the other hand, we don't want to create a situation where the affordable housing itself becomes prohibitively expensive to develop. Uh, does that sound accurate? Absolutely. So basically, I think one approach that's in, been taken in the rental housing um, context here is for units of 500 square feet or less, there's a significant discount on the fee. Um, the idea being that smaller units like that are more affordable. Um, I note that a similar approach has not been taken to uh, residential care, which again is kind of a hybrid between commercial but also folks live there. I'm wondering if it makes sense to consider a similar discount um, for smaller residential care units because those by definition are going to be affordable, more affordable as well. The backdrop, and I think we're going to hear from some folks uh, in this space, is that we're talking about some significant fees here. Again, you can comment on how it would relate to existing fees absent this, but I think the, the tenor of what we're likely to hear um, from Mr. Sorensen, who you noted, uh, uh, submitted a letter to us, fairly detailed one, is we're talking about large fees. So do, are we striking the right balance between wanting to create affordable but also acknowledging the impacts of development, which in turn relate to affordability? Thank you for that. I'm going to start with your, the first part of your question, which was about what the current requirement is. So we had a nexus study that was completed in 2003 that established a jobs housing linkage fee. And it um, developed a specific fee based on a square um, per square foot fee for certain development types um, that were deemed most common development types during the time that this, that, that nexus study was completed. Um, for what was commonly called at that time assisted living, there wasn't a fee established. It was just noted that at the time that this type of development came through, that a specific nexus study would need to be completed that would look at the number of employees generated. And so basically we would look at projects on a specific case-by-case -case basis um, and have the um, project applicant would give us their data on the number of new jobs and the square footage that was created and develop a fee that was based on 25% of that impact. 
consistent with our other fees, um, our other jobs housing fees. So that's what our code currently says. But it's not very clear. So if you are a developer who's coming in and trying to figure out what your per, you know, the feasibility of a project, you don't have an idea of what that fee is. So if somebody comes and asks us, what, what is the fee? We say, well, we don't know. We're going we're gonna to have a nexus study done at that time. And so there isn't kind of the transparency and the ease of developing um, an accurate um, feasibility study at this time. So that's one of the reasons that we wanted to do this nexus study that would say, okay, let's be up front so that everybody can understand what those fees are when they're trying to evaluate the feasibility of their project. Um, the second part of your question was around what about, what is the impact and are we striking a balance? Um, you know, we, one piece of your question said, are we striking a balance between the affordable housing? I mean, we need to remember that the, this type of housing that's developed um, are not affordable and they are not affordable to low or moderate income folks. It's really challenging to provide residential care facilities at for low and moderate income people. Is but that even if, for example, we encourage smaller units? The, the unit size has not, the, you know, when we've looked at it, we haven't seen a tract. The unit size is not, even the smaller ones are still not affordable to low or moderate income people. Um, they're, they're far outside of their reach. And there are only a few that are run by nonprofits, and those are the cases that they are affordable. But the market rate ones, even with the smaller units, have not, are not affordable to low or moderate income people. Um, and so we believe that the fee that we're proposing, which has a significant discount, as you saw, it's reduced by 90% um, of what the, fee, the justifiable fee is, does strike that balance between what, um, what is justified and what could be reasonable and still make a project feasible. Um, we also need to remember that this type of development creates a high number of jobs. Um, we just heard earlier about the impacts of the commute that we're trying to do with our own employees, and this is another example that, you know, those folks are not going to be able to live in the communities where they work and are going to be forced to get on our roads and cause additional traffic. So um, what we're trying to do is mitigate a portion of that impact by providing some fees that we can develop some housing and preserve some existing housing. Got one quick follow-up. Um, is it true that uh, a developer could also meet the requirement by actually setting aside a certain number of units as affordable? Absolutely. Our code allows that for any of our fees that if a developer can alternatively propose to provide some units rather than, than the fees. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Rice? Yeah, just a, a follow-up to that question and that response um, with regards to the ability to offer units uh, versus the fee. Is that is that um, uh, the formula pretty much then a wash for the developer in terms of cost? I would I would think that actually um, um, designating an affordable unit because the affordability. I mean, part of the co the cost of these units is not is not the actual real estate as much as it is the service, the support services attached. So that would be in perpetuity an affordable unit in a skilled nursing facility. And I mean, I'm, I, I imagine that's going to be more costly than paying a fee. That it would be my assumption also. Um, you know, Though I think it would be actually a preferable outcome. It, I think it would be a preferable outcome. Objective. Absolutely. From our perspective, you know, it's it, given how difficult it is to develop affordable housing in this community, it would be definitely all an, all, a better alternative to actually have um, some homes, some some units provided, some spaces that could be used affordably. Um, you know, we have found that developers um, almost always want to propose to pay a fee rather than do the units. You know, our code currently allows you to request and, and ask to develop units rather than or ask to pay a fee rather than develop units, and developers will frequently ask to pay the fee. Um, our code doesn't allow it just on, you know, across the board, but people will, will usually try to pay a fee rather than develop a unit because it is um, more cost effective to just pay the fee. Okay, so, and one more question. So, um, in unincorporated Marin, um, we, we know, you know, all of our, our land has been zoned. 
how much, what's the context in terms of opportunity for these kinds of facilities with our current zoning? Do we, do we know what the Thanks. universe is of available developable land? I don't think that I can answer that question, but residential care facilities are allowed in commercial zoning, so um, all of our mixed use zoning is the type of um, locations that they could be, so, okay. you know. So we can't really, actually that's not something we could yeah. do now. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, if there are no other questions at this time, I'll open it up for public comment. Good morning. Is it still morning? Yeah. Good morning. My name is Robert Eves. I uh, run a company called Venture Corporation, which is a commercial real estate building and development firm. We've done many projects throughout the western United States. I uh, live in Marin County. In a, a couple of weeks, we're going to be submitted an application for a precise development plan and, and design review approval for a 126 apartment senior assisted living center to be built in San Rafael in Marin County jurisdiction. So that project is coming right up. We have just, or I have just recently learned about the proposed new fees that we're here today to discuss and I, I want to offer a few, uh, a few comments on it. First, uh, in a very exhaustive study, and I mean a thorough study that, that uh, the ladies refer to, uh, this uh, concept was, was uh, reviewed in, in great depth. And in many places in the study, it says that there's a tremendous need and growing need in Marin County for senior housing. In a, a recent study does, done by, uh, by a firm called Senior Housing Analytics from, senior, uh, from uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, they reported that currently there are 21,183 people living in Marin County who are 75 years or older. In eight years, that number will rise by 49% to 31,500 people in excess of 75 years of age. Marin does not have the housing for these people. The county's uh, report also pointed out that there's no senior living projects in the development pipeline. Not one. Now why would that be? If there's such a demand for this senior housing, why aren't developers just putting it up here and there? Today in Marin, a developer like my company will have to pay about 22 different kinds of fees to get a project launched. They're from every imaginable source and they amount to a huge amount of money. On an apartment project like the one that we're proposing, which by the way already has master plan approval, we're seeking our, the, the details of a precise development plan, we're facing between $30,000 and $60,000 in costs and fees per apartment. And now the county wants to add more fees, huge fees this time, and I ask is there any doubt, is there any wonder why there aren't any projects in the pipeline? Well, it's because you can't make sense out of them. The barriers to entry here in Marin are overwhelming. The developers see the need for it, but nobody's going to apply for it, and now it's going to become increasingly difficult if these new fees get, uh, get passed. If we want senior housing in Marin and we have a great and growing need for it, we need to encourage it, not discourage it. The county already has a jobs housing linkage program and, and the supervisor kindly referenced that a few minutes ago. The fees range from $1.94 per square foot, that's for a warehouse project that a developer might want to put up, to $7.19 for an office or R&D project. So about $2 to $7 a square foot. Now the county staff is proposing that we, a fee for an, a senior assisted housing, assisted living project like ours, be $18 per square foot. That's triple or quadruple the fees that other projects have to pay. So what we're doing here is we're charging nine times more for senior living, which we badly need, than for a warehouse, which may not have the same need. So this program is encouraging the wrong product and ought to be reevaluated. My projects, my company's new project will already face about four million dollars in fees of various kinds in order to get through the process. This, this proposed new fee will add a million seven hundred thousand dollars to this project and it'll break the back of the project and it will prove the formula that 
nobody is going to build any of these things because they don't make any financial sense here. So uh, we have an idea, maybe another way that this could be handled. We don't want to dodge our responsibilities, and we understand the need for affordable housing, just as it exists for senior living. But we have another plan, and I'd like to introduce Neil Sorensen, who has got a proposal that, that may make a little bit more sense. And uh, unless you have any questions, I'll uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. You would be available for questions at, at, at a yes, future time. Yes, sir, of time. course. Thank you, Mr. Eves. I've got a little handout that can be given. Thank you. Uh, President Kinsey, uh, members of the board, uh, my name is Neil Sorensen. I'm the attorney for Venture Corporation. As, as Mr. Eves has pointed out to you, I think rather eloquently, um, there are a lot of practical problems with the approach the staff is taking on the jobs, housing linkage fee, and the rental housing impact fee. Uh, rather than arguing about details in, your, in the studies and what, what the fee would be uh, from, from that academic approach, I want to suggest some practical alternatives. Because um, I think we can come to possibly a win-win situation. Before I do that, I think you have a procedural problem that probably doesn't allow you to act on this today. Um, what the staff is, as the staff has told you, you've got a jobs housing leakage fee. It's in section 22.22100, which is the first page of the handout I just gave you. And what you're essentially doing is amending that because there's a chart there, uh, table 3-4B, that lists assisted living and it says if a developer is going to do it, he has to submit data and information to help establish the fee. So you're going to amend that and establish a per square foot fee, which we think is a good thing. Uh, as your staff said, it, 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 it'll help developers in the future. But you can't amend an ordinance with a resolution. There's a doctrine in California called the Equal Dig Dignities Rule. It doesn't allow you to do that. It uh, goes all the way back to the Marincello case in Marin, where the county tried to do that. There's also a government code section 65853 that says if you're going to amend a zoning ordinance, you need to do that by ordinance. So I think you're going to have to continue that, that today. But I think that's okay because I think you've got some other problems. The resolution itself is a little bit vague um, because we have no idea what this table one that your staff is suggesting where it would fit in the ordinance. The existing table is 3-4B and they're suggesting this new table one. I don't know where that fits, what it has to do with the existing ordinance. I think the ordinance is also unclear on terms like residential care and how square footage is mentioned. It, it mentions square footage in different contexts. I think you probably want to clarify that. Putting all that aside, you know, as Mr. Eves has, I think, told you, the, you don't want to discourage these facilities. You've got a great need for them. And so, to not discourage him, what we're suggesting is, I think, what Supervisor Kinsey mentioned at the last meeting and Supervisor Conley's mentioned today, is come up with a graduated scale. Uh, it makes no sense to charge $18 a square foot for residential care, and you're charging $7 for office. Um, it just absolutely makes no sense. I think if you want to discourage something, you've probably got enough office buildings in this county, you don't need them. So we've suggested on page one, uh, a, a scale for residential care facilities, excuse me, on page two of my handout, and then on page three we've suggested a scale for um, the senior rental housing. And what the idea there is that you keep the table that you currently uh, have, the staff is suggesting for regular rental housing, but if a developer proposes deed-restricted senior housing, you come up with this graduated scale of any unit less than 500 square feet would pay zero dollars a square foot. Units between 500 and 1,000 would pay five dollars a square foot. And only those units over 10 dollars, excuse me, over 1,000 square feet would pay 10 dollars. I think this will encourage rather than discourage this type of housing. And, and going back to one of the questions, I think with respect to residential care facilities, I think you, could, you, you really can argue that if you make a smaller residential care unit, you're going to have less need for employees. If 
if I move into a, a unit by myself that's small, maybe a studio or a one bedroom, uh, I'm going to need fewer employees than if my wife and I move into one. Um, there's going to be less food process, uh, the food care, there's going to be less you know, changing of the sheets, cleaning, that kind of thing. So smaller units, less employees, less need for housing, less fees. Um, just one minor quibble that I would have with what staff told you a moment ago that, that uh, the discount that they're suggesting is less than what we argued. We don't agree that it is. Uh, I'm not going to go into that. I can go into it in a letter to you if it's important. I see that my time is up. I would th want to thank you for the opportunity and thank you that you put this over another meeting that we could uh, come before you again and, and, and make these proposals. We appreciate that opportunity and we would like to work with the staff to come up with something that encourages this type of housing rather than discourages it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please come forward. My name is Andrew Marshall. I think there is other ways to look into this. Uh, for the fees, I'd like to know how we looked into the fact that we could get grants for loans. Because if we are providing housing for as much need as we have for seniors, what if we looked into the possibilities or from the foundations or wherever FC was going to do his project that we would find a grant or a loan for that $1.4 million and that would not change anything? Is there any possibilities of those kind of what I like to call creative financing for those fees? And I would hope that we would consider whatever we can do to activate this project or projects like this because there is a real need for senior housing. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, anybody who'd like to speak knows how to do it. Raleigh Katzman, Association of Public Employees. I think last time this was on the calendar, I noted that um, all of these fees that we hear about all the time really happened after Prop 13 was passed. Because before that, property tax, generally revenue, generated the enough money to pay for these things that new development covers. Let me just say, without getting into the specifics of how many dollars the per square foot it should be, I think it's important to note that when you're talking about a, a housing fee, affordable housing fee for other housing development, market rate housing, not assisted care, or senior housing of this nature, you're really talking about somebody's going to develop a market rate and we want some money to below, build below market. In this case, it's not just that. It's that the development of these kind of senior, skilled nursing facilities, et cetera, generate a need for additional people to work. And most of those people who work in these places can't afford to live in Marin County. So what, I don't know what the right dollar amount is. I don't know about whether you have to do this by resolution or by ordinance. But there needs to be a recognition that if we're going to build assisted living, which we need, we need to do something that helps make it possible for the people who work there and care for people to be able to live in Marin County, not have to drive two hours a day. John Reynolds, member, uh, li live in the canal, member of First United Methodist Church. I'm concerned here that indeed that uh, the uh, amount that a person is charged, a senior is charged for being in one of the assisted living places or the rental housing is something that people can afford. I mean, there are people that can afford more, people that can afford less. I, I assume that you have uh, looked at that issue that, that you, you know, affordability of the people that actually use the units. But then, like uh, the person that just spoke, yeah, <laughs> you know, we need more funds for affordable housing, for p jobs that are generated by these development of these facilities, as well as other people that uh, don't live here but uh, work here. We, it, it's, you know, we, the foundations, other, we need to have nonprofit and profit developers uh, coalition to develop uh, projects, small projects that will accommodate the need for affordable housing. So th that's, so we need that money, more money, and, and these fees uh, are part of that, that mix. So I appreciate 
you, you're listening to that. Good morning. Uh, I don't have any answers to the complexities that you described. I just want to add a problem. I'm uh, sure so you need another problem. Uh, it's that I've noticed in the newspapers uh, lots of advertisements uh, and on the web, uh, come to live at this place, come to live at that place, come to this is my home. And these are places, everything from the Redwoods to places in San Rafael and Terra Linda, are assisted living facilities, are advertising that they have vacancies. Now, there seem, would seem to be a strange sort of uh, disconnect if you say we need housing for the elderly, uh, but uh, somehow there, there are vacancies. The thing that comes to mind in an economic system is that it's costing more than most people can afford and that that's why they've got vacancies. So I don't have the, the answers, there are probably several that you have to consider, but there seems to be a disconnect because the, the facilities are having to advertise, to attract people, and, the thi and yet we have a lot of elderly people, I'm one of them. But the, it seems then that the only logical thing I could figure that even under the current system, it's costing too much for people to afford to go there. So the question comes, if you then increase the fees for alternate housing, then do you make the people who build them have to charge more? So I only offer that, uh, it, it sort of seemed obvious to me, but I, I thought perhaps it hadn't been thought of. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Okay. Uh, we'll bring it back. We'll close the public hearing on this, bring it back uh, to the board uh, and to the staff. Is there anything that, y that was said during public comment that you would like to respond to? And I see. I'll just make a couple of brief comments. David Zaltzman, Deputy County Counsel. Our office has been encouraging all departments to adopt fees under the Mitigation Fee Act, which this is part of, by resolution because it is much less cumbersome than some of the historic practices we've used of adopting them by ordinance. Having said that before though, uh, having said that though, um, Mr. Sorensen is correct that to the extent these resolutions would be amending an existing ordinance, uh, we can't do that. So if you were to adopt these resolutions, we would have to change the, uh, the date of their uh, appl applicability for when the, uh, at the, uh, the conflicting part of the ordinance is repealed, assuming it, assuming it would be. So in other words, you're saying that we would have to take an action to the existing ordinance separate from this? Right, before this could take effect. I'm not saying, uh, I, I'm not sure I agree with Mr. Sorensen that you couldn't adopt it today, but instead of having it be effective immediately, it could only become effective when the amendment to the ordinance, the, the conflicting part of the ordinance uh, is repealed. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. I, I just wanted to comment on the the comparison with some of our other fees that are in the code that he that uh, Mr. Sorensen brought up. Um, as I mentioned, the the fees that he listed, the jobs housing fees, were established in 2003, um, and th when they were adopted, they didn't include the cost of living increase that we that we have now for all of our projects. So when we adopt a fee now we include a cost of living increase that's adopted, that's done every year. So we look at, um, at those COLAs that are, so that the fees go up automatically. Um, we evaluate that and do it every year. Um, but this fee did not include that. We haven't, we have such, a, we have such little commercial development in the county that we haven't gone, th up, gone back and had a fee updated. But we, that's on our workload eventually that we'll do that and we'll, at that time, when the fee, when we do a new nexus study on those fees, we'll include a cost of living increase, and they would be, um, they'd increase annually like our other fees. Um, but if you look at the fees that were more recently ad, um, adopted, the single family home impact fee, for example, they're much more in line with these current fees. I think the current fees are a little bit over sixteen dollars a square foot for the larger homes currently. So um, these fees are in line with that. And then I think Debbie wanted to talk a little bit about um, his characterization of um, proposing that these be looked at as a unit rather than a square footage, which is not the way our Nexus study was done. Right, so just briefly, 
the methodology behind these jobs housing linkage fees is based on calculations of services provided per persons living in these facilities. They're based on prototypes that are developed um, and they're not necessarily of, of how these facilities operate and they're not necessarily contingent on the, on the size of particular units. Um, you can have two couples living in the same facility, one in a 500 square foot room and one in a 2,000 square foot room, you'll be receiving the same services. Um, it's just not necessarily methodologically sound to apply our fees in the way that's suggested in this memo. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you Supervisor Rice? Yeah, I, need, I, I need more clarification on that. So, um, so the, fee themse the fees themselves, on, on looking at your table on page six of eight, when it says fee per square foot, it's, that's the overall facility footprint, not on a per unit basis, Correct. on a per unit living, the living quarters. Correct. That's correct, because what it's uh, looking at is the number of jobs per square foot. Generated by Generated that by that commercial overall. use, right. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, wait, can I have a, I'm sorry, can I ask a clarifying question? Certainly. That you're talking about residential care and skilled nursing facilities right now, right? But when you do the square foot uh, calculation for the rental housing impact fee, it is by the size of the living unit, not the total size of the, of the building itself. That's correct. correct. Thank you. Because that in, sure. in this case, yeah. you're not evaluating it no. based on the number of employees who are living in that yeah. space or working in that sense. space. I just want right. to make sure we were all on the yes. same page. And then thank can you. I add one on, on uh, Supervisor Rice? Yeah. So thank, thank you, Supervisor Sears. Uh, um, so on that rental housing, um, on the rental housing table, um, did we, I'm assuming, and I read through the, the study, but I didn't remember every page. Um, what is the average size of a unit in a, in a uh, facility like this? I mean, when you look at, I'm, yes, at the, at the residential. Um, are you talking about the rental impact fee or the yes, residential I'm care? Talking about, I'm talking about the rental housing impact fee because he, Mr. Sorensen is suggesting a different scale or a, a different um, uh, number, you know, associated. I'm just curious is what's the average size of those units? We don't have that information. So I think it, for, for the rental housing, you'd have to survey, you know, existing rental housing to find out what square footage of all that was. We don't have... We don't have that. It, there also haven't been new developments of market rate rental housing in the county that we could look at. You know, I don't think that there's been any new market rate rental housing approved, at least in the last 10 years and probably farther back than that. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm the, 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 pro the housing that I'm familiar with around senior projects especially, they tend to be on the smaller side. But anyway. Okay. Thank you. Quick follow-up as well. Okay, Supervisor Conley. Uh, Lily, you briefly touched on just the different types of commercial fees, and, and granted, there's probably some cost of living ad adjustments. It, it still does seem that this is out of scale with those other range of fees. And what's interesting is this is, again, commercial but also residential in nature. I, I've got to admit I'm struggling with that still. Um, I guess I am open to considering some sort of graduated approach. Um, in fact, uh, I'll make a motion that we amend the proposal to consider a graduated scale for residential care and skilled nursing as well as rental housing. I don't know that we can nail that schedule today um, perhaps we can, but it, I'll put that motion out at this point to have it be formally considered. M may well, I just comment? Let's just oh, wait sorry. and see if there's anyone at this time wishing to second that motion. Um, well, I have a clarifying question. I might consider it. I might consider that, but do we then have an analytical problem because the study you've done is not based on a graduated fee, right? So we don't have a nexus. Right. We'd have to do a, a new nexus study 
in order to pursue that alternative approach with respect to the uh, skilled nursing facility, right? right? I, I think we may, because what we looked at is the number of employees in the whole space. So if you were just taking it out and looking at the units and looking at the size of those units, would we then not be considering the rest of the space in in that facility? Because that's where most of, you know, a lot of the space is in the rest of the, sp of the, of the buildings. And so I, I, I don't know if we'd have to, we'd have to, we may have to do a different study since that's not what was measured and that's not how, since this is a, this in our code is considered a commercial use, then we, we that's the, str the that's the lens that we would look at it through. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no second at this time, um, I, I'd like to invite Mr. Eves up just to ask a few questions because clearly uh, you're facing a very real challenge, uh, a proposal that's on the doorstep of being, or the threshold of being submitted. Um, in your project, given that um, we do have a county code that did say that for non-residential development included assisting living, um, you would provide information. Um, in your project, have you budgeted anything for uh, this? Yes, uh, we have. Perhaps it was eight months ago or so, I met with Julie Thomas <coughs> and uh, asked her how the current program works. Because in the fee program that exists today, it says that it's $2 for warehouses and $5 for office buildings and so on. But, but it also has a line for assisted living facilities, like ours. And the amount there is to be determined. We simply don't know how much that would be. And so I met with her and said, can you give me a clue? How, I mean, we're trying to put together a budget to see whether we should be buying this land. Does this thing make financial sense or not? And uh, she was very helpful and laid out the numbers and she said, well, some of your apartments are likely to be independent living and some of them are going to be assisted, maybe the majority assisted. Uh, and they would have two different ways of calculating and she ran it out for me and she had, was clear that it was an estimate and that the law was changing and that there would be a new ordinance in Marin. And so she was very helpful and was able just to give me a, a, a good guess. And uh, that good guess was, uh, we went back and did the math at our office, and that good guess was a little over $600,000. Versus so the $1.4 million you said that this would, uh, would uh, affect your project? Uh, what this program will cost us is $1.7 million. And uh, so it was, the number was around $600,000. And so we put that into our budget at the time and found that, that we could probably make that work. But remember, that's just one of, 21 other kinds of fees that we also have to pay to every imaginable agency and organization. And altogether, those numbers, uh, with our affordable estimate, uh, were about uh, $4 million. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very costly. And I noted a moment ago that uh, one of the ladies said that, uh, that there have been no applications for apartments in Marin County for years. I wonder why. I bet we all know why there haven't been any because the fees are so high they're backbreaking. So we don't get affordable housing here, we don't get senior housing, we don't get new apartments because the costs are simply too high. Right. And this makes it even more more difficult. Okay. Thank you. I want to ask you a couple other questions. Um, what uh, what how many units are you going to be proposing? One hundred and twenty six. We're approved for hundred and fifty. hundred and twenty six. And um, what is the unit size mix? What is your smallest unit? Approximately, uh, I think the smallest is in a, in, a, in assisted living uh, component, a memory care component, and they're around 350 square feet. And uh, the largest, I th if I remember correctly, are about 950 square feet. Okay, 350 to 950 square feet. Yes, Thank sir. you. Okay, and you know, given your substantial experience in um, development in California. Are you suggesting that um, Marin County's lack of development of, of housing units is a function of our uh, fee schedule as opposed to the fees uh, in other communities? I think it's a big part of it, Supervisor. It isn't the only part. We all live here. We know that the barriers to entry here are tough. Nobody wants any development near them, no matter what sort of thing it is and what kind of project. 
so development generally is opposed in our county plus we've dedicated if my figures are correct eighty eight percent of our county has been dedicated to permanent open space so that leaves about fifteen sixteen percent that can be developed and ninety nine percent of that's done so what do we have available to develop that's another barrier it's you the question was asked a minute ago can we can we put up more shopping centers or more senior living centers and where would you do it well there's not a lot a lot of land available and uh... and if you can find some then it's very pricey so we the cost of the land the opposition to develop of any development of any kind and then the final economic backbreaker the fees cause things that you might want to have uh, like a new senior living facility uh... be uh... uh stopped uh, incidentally one other point came up uh, Lily was unable to answer this and for good reason uh, the question was raised well if you're going to have a fee should the fee be based upon the square footage of the individual apartments or should it be based upon the entire building uh, we will be talking with the supervisor Connolly soon about a project nearby here that will if, if, it, if it gets advanced will be a senior apartment complex all independent living they won't be serving three meals a day uh, and have all, and a, there won't be a fitness center and all the other things that will be will be part of the project that we're proposing to, in the next couple of weeks and um, so the project that, that the assisted living center has common areas there might be a movie room or a computer room or there's certainly a dining room there's hallways there's lobbies living rooms and so the general uh, mix of that is 35 percent is uh, common areas and 65 percent is the living areas the apartments where people live so one question might be sh should such a, a fee whatever the fee is should it be charged just on the places where people live or should it be charged on the building as a whole and that's a, a, a debate we probably won't solve today as to the other project that, that we're contemplating right now it won't have the common areas and so the fee if there's to be one would be easily charged there it'll be on a hundred percent because a hundred percent of the space will be living thank you thank you for your comments um, David I'm going to ask you up for to answer a question if you could come up um, given the uh, need for us to revise our zoning ordinance before it, this uh, fee could be uh, imposed um, if a project has been submitted prior to the change of the ordinance then would the uh, fee structure at the time that the project was submitted be what we would be uh, charging or would it be uh, retroactive well my understanding is that the fees imposed at the time of the building permit and therefore you know since this isn't a, a development agreement they are they don't have a vested right against new fees having said that your board has full discretion to determine whether or not it's you know how to impose it and to grandfather certain projects if that's the board's desire but gen as a general rule no um, this assuming that we get the that if you're if your board were to adopt the resolutions dependent or conditioned upon the um, the, the revision to the ordinance and if the revision to the ordinance did take effect before they before they got their building permits this fee would apply okay. as a matter of law now but once again your board has discretion to grandfather projects or take other actions to uh, perhaps have the old law apply to this particular project if that's your board's direction right well you know I, I'm going to share with the board my thoughts on this and I welcome others um, I, I think that the staff has done a lot of hard work w well meaning responsive to the crisis state that we find ourselves in around housing and housing our workforce especially our lower income workforce um, I think that there's an understandable nexus between the 35 percent of the building that is non-residential in a development as Mr. Eve suggested as it relates to the challenge we're trying to address which is the employees who work there and their needs for housing and although no project in and of itself is going to solve that challenge um, we need all oars in the water right now if we want to have a diverse workforce in Marin County going forward um, so I, I'm supportive of the approach that's been taken by this nexus study um, 
I, I also think that um, in the going forward that I would like to think that uh, developers who have the courage to try to create residential housing for seniors, assisted living or independent living or otherwise, may well wish to integrate affordability into their projects rather than simply uh, create a pro forma that has a line item for buying their way out of providing affordability uh, because it is really uh, an important part of a healthy community to have a diverse community. Then having said all of that, um, you know, my view right now is that it would be advisable for our board to direct our staff to negotiate directly with Mr. Eves on this particular project where there's about a $1.1 million difference that he's citing between what he w estimated based on his conversations last year and where he is today. And we don't see these projects come in very often. We're not going to see a, a flood of new applications for projects. Um, so I want to be, I'd like us to be somewhat thoughtful about the situation that this particular applicant is in. Um, and I'm not suggesting that we go back and rely just on the uh, estimates that were provided a year ago, uh, but also that there may be an opportunity for us to negotiate something um, even as we're trying to come up with the revised ordinance, which I personally would support at the scale that's being proposed right now. Um, but I wanted to suggest that there's some consideration may be given to Mr. Eve's project, given how far along he is in the process. Uh, Supervisor yeah, Collins? Oh, Supervisor Arnold, oh, then okay. Supervisor Collins. Um, well, let me just say that I, I agree with Supervisor Kinsey. I, I want to thank staff for bringing this item back to us with the additional clarification. I'm supportive of a methodology for calculating these fees. Oh, um, I believe the more clarity, expectation, and transparency that we can provide to both developers and the public about development and associated fees, the better we are. Um, and in addition, we all know there is a great need for affordable housing in Marin County. And it's important for us to continue to help offset the impacts associated with market rate development. With that said, I am supportive of having staff work with this particular developer to grandfather something in that gives them a break because this is, we have a project that is here and ready to go and that's an unusual thing in Marin for this type of housing. Supervisor Conley. Well, I agree some, to some extent with my colleagues. No one's disputing the need to uh, strike that right balance to um, offset development impacts <coughs> with uh, creating funds for affordable housing. I think the comments underscore that, in effect, this measure is not fully baked. Um, just to set the record clear, Although Mr. Eves, I think, is perhaps on the road to making a proposal, we haven't seen anything yet. Thus, I'm not in a position to even comment on, on it at this point. Um, and in effect, I think we're acknowledging that these fees are high and that we would be willing to, in effect, negotiate with uh, Mr. Eves over his possible project. Well, we're going to get the same request down the road. Um, and how are we going to relate to it then? Again, I think a sensible approach would be to either build in some flexibility, and that could be a graduated scale, or some other means to strike that right balance. But it seems like we're kind of getting off on a slippery slope footing if we're already creating an exception to the rule. Uh, Supervisor Shears? And, and I agree with that. I think it, the information we've heard from Mr. Eves and his colleague has been very informative for us in considering what's appropriate with this ordinance, but I don't think we should let a single project that is not actually pending before us drive our thinking about a, a, an ordinance more broadly. I'm not closing the door on whatever might happen once an actual application comes in, but I don't think we're at a, anybody's at a position to really have that conversation now or to have that be the, pre, the sole determinant of what we do on a, mm -hmm. a broader ordinance. 
that said, I do think we, I'd like us to think more about this. I mean, when this came to us before, I, raised, I was concerned about um, the amount of fees for a unit that was less than 500 square feet. I think this is a small, that's a very small unit to begin with. I'd like to see that $5 taken down to a dollar. And so I think that there's still conversation here about what's an appropriate um, scale for these fees. And I, you know, and there may be issues. I'm very uh, sensitive to the, the employee problem and obviously our affordable housing problem, but I think maybe we do need to have a little more conversation, as my colleague Sue Fraser Kim just said, about whether 18 and 21 is the appropriate number or not. So I think we're getting there, um, but we may not be quite there yet. And continue to dialogue with Mr. Reeves. And, uh, yeah, and right, not closing that door. Okay. Supervisor Wright? Yeah, I actually, um, I think uh, on the on the job, jobs housing linkage fee, um, I just think we can't lose sight uh, of the jobs piece of this, and that's why the square footage, and it's, it's about how many jobs right. are, these, are these businesses of any type, um, the residential care, the skilled nursing, or, or warehouse, how many are they creating? I mean, we are suffering throughout the Bay Area because we have jobs created one place and housing created another and or not enough. It's, um, so I, um, I really feel it's important that we stick by the, the, the dro what's driving the jobs ho housing linkage fee and not lose sight of that. I think that the Nexus study um, did its work on this jobs housing linkage fee and um, I was you know, sort of trying to do the math. I'm thinking of a for-profit project, um, uh, a facility like this that will be in place for decades and decades and decades and I haven't seen, the, of course, the business plan and I don't know what the exact project is, but um, given the limited amount of real estate that's available here in Marin County Develop, I would say anybody who can get their foot in the door, even if it costs them a lot up front, over time is going to do pretty darn well. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable, actually, with the jobs, linking, uh, jobs housing linkage fee proposal. On the rental housing impact fee, um, I do think we should, be, um, we should be encouraging those smaller units. Um, I'm not sure. I, I actually um, don't know that the uh, fees being um, proposed are um, off the charts. I'm, you know, a 500-square-foot unit, um, it may be smaller than what most of us think is comfortable, but actually it, it may be the, the wave of the future. Um, I think that's something I would work, I, I, I'm, I'm ready to, to think about more, but um, I don't think I've got the votes. I would like to move forward on the jobs housing linkage fee ordinance um, or impact fee, and if, um, if, if there were other folks willing to do it, and I'm um, willing to give some more thought to the rental housing impact fee and how that plays out. Well, why don't you see what's so going on? I will do that. So I'd like to ma make a motion that we adopt um, the resolution, uh, proposed revolution approving the jobs housing linkage fee for residential care and skilled nursing facilities. I'll second Here. that. Uh, one point of uh, procedure, though, as, as I pointed out previously, since with respect to the non-residential, which this is, it currently conflicts with the ordinance. We would have to have it not take effect mm -hmm. until and unless the, uh, the conflicting provision of the current ordinance is repealed, which right. obviously we would bring to you uh, in post-haste. <laughs> that needs part of motion. I did second that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any uh, comment on the motion as it stands? Okay. Um, then uh, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. So that motion does pass. And then as it relates to the public hearing or the proposed resolution approving the rental housing impact fee, uh, the, the question it seems like within our board is whether or not on the, the, rem the relatively smaller units below 500 square feet, whether we have the right uh, dollar amount is that is that what I'm hearing from question, from yes. Supervisor Sears? But also, I, I think you were raising that question, Supervisor Rice. Is that was your is that the concern you have about that? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, you know, if if you had the five dollars, which is what I believe it is, I got to get to my mm -hmm. chart um, attachment D. Let's get there. Uh, 
five dollars a square foot so for a project like mr. Eves talked about 300 some square feet that would be talking about fifteen hundred dollars uh, and um, that is not a huge amount considering that uh, the housing costs on a per square footage basis are substantial um, so I, I myself would uh, prefer that if we're going to move forward that we move forward with this also at this time um, and that we monitor uh, our progress. And I would make that motion on your behalf. Is there a second? And, and just to be clear once again since this resolution does not uh, is strictly residential and doesn't impact the part of the ordinance dealing with uh, non-residential this resolution could be adopted as is to go into effect immediately. Thank you. Right. So is there a second to this? Second. second. Any more discussion of this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Then uh, we have uh, adopted the uh, rental housing impact fee and we have approved a jobs housing linkage fee for residential care and skilled nursing facilities subject to a uh, revision to our existing land uh, use ordinance, our zoning ordinance uh, related to those types of facilities. And that completes this item. Thank you.